March Madness may be all about basketball for humans, but for birds, it's all about the nesting. Nesting is a fantastic feat of engineering for such a tiny creature, and there are a lot of things that humans can do to help them out. To understand more about that specific feature, we're here with one of the experts about bird nesting, Ron Mills, owner of the Wild Birds Unlimited store. So, want to understand a little bit more about nesting. Now, I understand that March, pretty much March is the target for the times that the birds are nesting. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, when the birds are able to survive the winter. So, they obviously, they don't want to have babies when there's snow on the ground. So, uh, when they can feed them, then they start having babies. Nature tends to take care of itself that way. Okay. Now, there are birds, some birds that want to build a nest and other birds that can utilize a nest box. So first, let's understand about the birds that just build the traditional nest that we've all seen. What kinds of birds are those? Well, I guess the most common, the one that everybody wants in their yard, is the cardinal. Okay. And cardinal. Uh, that and blue jays, I guess, are the most uh, ones that you would notice because of their color. Mm -hmm. uh, neither of them build nests in boxes. Okay. So they utilize uh, cardinals are real big on uh, like red tip fatinia bushes okay. because the red disguises their color. Oh, uh, okay. So as they're in the ne in the in their nest, they don't seem to have as many predators seeing their bright red colors. Oh. Uh, blue jays always use the tree limbs. Mm -hmm. They use the big trunk of the tree between the limb and the trunk of the tree mm -hmm. to support their nest. That's it's right. a little bit larger, mm -hmm. so uh, they need a little bit more support that way. Okay. Others, what you would normally see, sparrows. House sparrows are everywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, very common box because a lot of the houses that get purchased at flea markets, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, mm -hmm. will all have the larger hole in them, the inch and a half hole. Okay. So that's what you tend to see, and they don't mind rocking around so much, okay. that kind of thing. Okay. And mockingbirds, they also like to have thorny bushes like hollies and so, so forth. Hollies, okay. um, I think right now, uh, Yopon holly, mm -hmm. uh, because it's full of the berries for them mm -hmm. to eat. Uh, so that's going nearby to the grocery store to pick up food. Okay. It's right there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, and it's evergreen, so they can have their nest, you know, there uh, all the time, and, and no real predators can see it from the outside. Okay. So cardinals like bushes that have uh, colors that disguise their colors. Right. Mockingbirds like sort of thorny, berry-infested bushes, mm -hmm. and blue, blue jays will take the, the crotch of a tree, Strong Correct. the strong... Uh, Right there. To help them out, what are some of the things that we can put out? Because most of our yards are just, just, just vacuumed of any kind of debris that birds would yeah, normally use true. for their nesting. So that's what can true. we do to, to change that back? What are some things we can do? Well, a lot of the birds, uh, smaller birds in particular, uh, mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun to use yarn, mm -hmm. uh, dryer lint, dog hair, any of the things that you can just naturally occur in your mm -hmm. yard or in your home. And you can put them in a small basket. So we're normally used for a suet cage. Uh, here in Texas, the suet tends to get nasty in the summer. So people <laughs> like to switch out using their, their suet. And they tend to put this away. So birds would just clutch on here and then just pick a little bit of this this old fur out. Could I use the exactly. hair from my hairbrush? You could. Okay. You can use that. Um, like I said, dog hair. It's uh, anything okay. that you can find that's soft and small okay, so that could I, be used. I, okay, well let's move on and understand the, by the way, I can put this out in this or I could just pop, leave it on the ground. On the ground, yeah. Although a cat might pounce on them and I can also put it in a, maybe a hanging basket, an empty you hanging basket. You could put basket it anywhere. The hanging baskets okay. are also great nests. Okay. Um, oh. Especially ivy because it's nice and thick and tends to flow down. Oh. Wrens adore it. Really? So do uh, So do morning doves. So oh. it's a great nest box just mm. for them. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, That's yes. Wonderful idea. Lots of people tell me they have to water around the nest all summer long. Oh, that is because so the sweet. Nurse is, mm -hmm. Oh, I would love that. Now, let me ask you while we're talking about this, let's move on to nest okay. boxes. And I want to understand, let's say for people who live in, in Dallas, whether they're in the city or in the suburbs, but as long as they've got some some big old shade trees, because that's going to affect the kinds of birds that show up. Sure. Okay, so let's say you've got some big old shade trees. What kinds of birds can we ex kind of generally expect to be nesting in that vicinity, and what kinds of nest boxes can we provide them to help make sure they have plenty of youngsters? Okay, the chickadees 
Uh, titmice, nuthatches, all of these birds are common in a woodland area like, uh, you know, the Lake Highlands Lakewood area. Mm -hmm. Those uh, are all small birds. Very too. small, very small. A uh, Carolina wren, for example, the best nest box for them, I'll reach down here and grab one of these, would be one with a cutout, a mm -hmm. triangular cutout. This would allow them to take small twigs in for their nest box. They love mm -hmm. to do that. So a small hole like this guy here would be very difficult for them to use. Okay. okay. Now chickadees, on the other hand, adore this box. Okay. It's nice because it's got a very small opening on there. No predators can get to it. Mm -hmm. um, they can come in, go, build their nest. What's even nice about this particular box is that we can look inside at the babies without Aww. affecting the nest. So we know when the nest has been emptied. Mm -hmm. We also know how many babies are in it. If there's chickadees, it's probably five or six eggs. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it's, this is very critical, when the babies are gone, take this side panel, or many of them have just different types of panels that you can open, lift the side and take the nest out. Okay, right. they won't reuse the they nest? Will, they will not. What will happen is, is if you don't take it out, they will continue to build nests on top of it until a predator could actually affect the babies okay. inside. Okay. So they'll be out in full view. And exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's another thing, you know, I think we've talked about before is, is perches. Perches are on all decorative houses, mm -hmm. um, but they are not necessary for the birds that are going to be using the house. Oh, okay. We don't want to let another larger bird perch on that and pull the babies out. Okay. That does so happen. If you're using this decorative, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, inside the house. But if you take it outside, take the perch off. That's so important to understand. Sure. Okay, now, let's say I get one of these little ones. You told me once before that it, depending on where you put it, it makes a big difference. So if I just hang this, let's say, on my patio, up, up in the rafters of my patio close to the house, what birds would that attract? Well, in this particular one, it would still be the very small birds. But when we look at one that's very common, like this guy here, mm -hmm. this one has an inch and a half hole, while this has an inch and an eighth. Okay. okay so this is very small birds. If I take this one and I put it under the eave of the house, mm -hmm. now we're talking about sparrows getting into it because they love that large hole. Okay. It's underneath a structure. They love structures, houses, barns, okay. that kind of thing. But if we take this same box and we put it up in a tree, uh, 10, 15, 20 feet, however tall your ladder is, that's okay. how tall <laughs> this is going to go up in the tree. Um, then we start seeing different birds. Now we start seeing you know, tit mice and nut hatches. If we fill this same box, 20 feet in the tree. We fill it full of sawdust or we put uh, cedar shavings or something like that in there. Now we're talking downy woodpeckers. Yay. So it's all about where you put it, how you present it, and for that bird to find what it wants out of it. Mm -hmm. So same box, multiple different birds, different okay. types of birds. Make sure they're stable. You see a cable on this particular one, uh -huh. and that's all fine for wrapping around the limb, but we want it to rest against the trunk of the tree. Okay. It can move a little bit, but when it starts swaying like crazy in those April winds, it's not good for the birds. They, they'll abandon the nest. I do want to make a couple of suggestions regarding after the babies are born, which will be more in the April, May time frame. Generally speaking, we've got about six weeks of egg hatching yeah. for right. the eggs to hatch. Right. Okay. Now, while adults eat a variety of foods, depending on what kind of bird it is, they may be eating seeds. Almost every single baby needs to have um, of these songbirds needs to have insects. Now, what do all the people in your neighborhood do? They try to kill off every insect that's around, right? So it's pretty hard for the parents to find anything. So it's really helpful. So kind. If you provide, ta-da, mealworms. Doesn't look so great right here, but these are some very uh, clean and easy to maintain little worms that you can put out on a on, uh, in a little dish outside, and you will just make life so much easier for the birding parents. Uh, one last piece of advice. Baby birds leave the nest at different times. Sometimes if the baby has feathers, mama and papa may have kicked it out of the nest on purpose. But when you see a naked baby, or one with just a very few couple of feathers, it may have fallen out or been pulled out or something unforeseen has happened to it. You can pick it up and put it in the nest. It's an old wives' tale that parent birds will ignore the baby because it smells bad. Uh, you wouldn't do that to your baby.
So put on a pair of gloves just to protect yourself from any mites the bird might have and to protect the bird from, to protect a, uh, leaving a scent of your own for a predator to follow. Pick it up, pop it back in the nest, and mom and papa will take good care of it. Anyway, Ron, thank yes. you. Oh, thank My you pleasure. so much. I really enjoyed talking with you. I've learned a lot, and I look forward to coming back and seeing you more often. Thank you. And I'm going to get a nest box before we leave. <laughs>